Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Pisces New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiatives coordination group. Today, we continue our rhythmic work, working, focusing on the sustainable development goals. And in the cycle of Pisces, we invite our focus to the goal 12, responsible consumption and production. Rebecca. Thanks, Sasha. We just remind ourselves as we enter the work of our purpose in these webinars, which is focused on the United, which are focused on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And this work is one of supporting and strengthening a shared vision of formulated thought forms of solution to address the many issues facing humanity and the planet. The intention is to vitalize thought forms that help to create conditions leading to the transformation of our world through the elevation of human consciousness. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. And over to you, Dot, as we align through the naming circle. Thank you, Rebecca. In the naming circle, we unite our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work together and as a group. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment which creates the group field and allows it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So your name will be sounded and you can follow the list uh, on the bar on the right. We'll begin with our presenters and organizers and then move to those participating in this webinar. And when you hear your name, please unmute yourself and then say your full name and where you're calling in from. Dot Maver, calling in from Sydney, Australia. And we're going to begin by calling in Utagabe and the Hechal team in Jerusalem, where simultaneously to our webinar overlapping, there is a Jerusalem meditation, awakening the will to love. Daniela. Greetings everyone, Daniela Nestorovic here, um, currently in Brussels, Belgium, Europe. Welcome, Daniela. Helena? Thank you, Dad. Helena Bach Hughes, tuning in from Meditation Mount in Ojai, California. Welcome, Helena. Sheldon? Hello, friends. <clears throat> this is Sheldon, coming in from the same place in Ojai, California. Wonderful to be with you. Welcome, Sheldon. Rebecca. 
Hi everyone, it's Rebecca. I'm calling in from the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Alexander. Hi, this is Alexander calling from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome, Alexander. Angelica. Hello, I'm calling from London, Great Britain. Welcome, Angelica. Annette. Hello, Annette. This is Annette Ebert calling from South Island, New Zealand. Welcome, Annette. Annette. This is Annette Lüffler from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Antoinette. Good afternoon, everybody. Antoinette from South Africa. Blessings to all. Welcome, Antoinette. Barclay. Hello, uh, this is Barclay Milne from Querétaro, Mexico, calling in. Uh, hello to everyone. Thank you very much. Welcome, Barclay. Vieta. Hello everybody, it's Beata Wakowska from Edenville, South Africa. Welcome, Beata. Thank you. Brigitte. Brigitte. Welcome, Brigitte. Catherine. Hello, this is Catherine Payer from Sydney, Australia. Many blessings. Welcome, Catherine. Cheryl. Cheryl Binson, Ames, Iowa, United States. Welcome, Cheryl. Christine. Welcome, Christine. Claire. Hello, everyone. This is Claire from Dunedin, South Island, New Zealand. Welcome, Claire. Dacia. Good morning. This is Dacia from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, on the West Coast. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Dacia. Danielle. Welcome, Danielle. Darcy. Hello, everyone. This is Darcy Sessions calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome, Darcy. Don. Please unmute yourself, Don. Hello, everyone. This is Don calling from Lagos, Nigeria. Welcome, Don. Ira. Tara Merkel, Colorado, USA. Hi, everyone. Um, glad to be here. Welcome, Ira. Irana. Hello, everyone. This is Irana calling from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Irana. Francis. Please unmute yourself, Francis. Uh, this is Francis from California. Welcome, Francis. Thank you. Jillian. Hello, everyone. It's Jillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome, Jillian. Ginny. Well, hello, everyone. This is Jenny Ross from Maui, Hawaii. Welcome, Jenny. Glenn. Hello there. Uh, this is Glenn Owen. I'm from Devon in the UK. 
Welcome, Glenn. Irna. Please unmute yourself, Irina. Welcome, Irina. Jean Marie. Welcome, Jean Marie. Karen. Hello, everyone. Karen Gritska from Portland, Oregon. Welcome, Karen. Catherine. Hello, it's Catherine Powers, Northfield, Minnesota, United States. Welcome, Catherine. Lerner. Hello, <laughs> it's Lone from Denmark. Welcome, Lerner. Lucy. Hello, Lucy Petrequin calling in from Geneva, Switzerland. Welcome, Lucy. Martha. Hello, dear friends. Uh, Martha Gallahue calling in from Weehawken, New Jersey, USA. Welcome, Martha. Michael. Blessings, everyone. This is Michael calling in from the Big Island of Hawaii. Welcome, Michael. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome, Nathaniel. Nick. What? Welcome, Nick. Nikita. Hello, it's Nikita from Ukraine, Kiev. Welcome, Nikita. Oksana. Hello, uh, my name is Oksana, Ukraine, Zhitomir. Welcome, Oksana. Olga. Good evening from Athens, Greece. It's Olga Deliganis. Thank you. Welcome, Olga. Pule. Payule calling in from Ashland, Oregon. Welcome, Payule. Silvana. Please unmute yourself, Silvana. Hello, everyone. It's Silvana from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome, Silvana. Tanya. Hello, everyone. This is Tanya Belfort. I'm calling from Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. Welcome, Tanya. Thanks. Welcome, everyone. Over to you, Rebecca. So as we went around our circle, we come together as a group and I invite Halina to lead us in alignment. Thank you, Sasha. So on that beautiful bell tone that we heard, let us sound that note internally.
and bring our awareness to the whole earth. to the mother of the world, to Gaia, and it is for this great mother who is laboring heavy that we bring our love and our light. So we are in the new moon energies of Pisces. And the sign of Pisces takes from all the signs. It is the great consummating energy. And it is the energy that is the light of the world, the light revealing the light of life itself. that light that forever ends the darkness of matter. So having heard these words, the specific light of Pisces, let us step into the peaceful presence of the soul, the soul that is the self, the soul that is free from all the fetters, from all the pulls of lower matter. And stand together as one unified group of lights. And let us imagine that we are standing around the earth. Standing with the spiritual workers of the world. As millions of lights and know that we are linked with the spiritual hierarchy, that great potency of the inner groups, within which the world teacher stands. The master of all masters, and linked to him as the Lord of the world, whose will we strive to know, who in turn is linked with the great Pisces energy that is flowing through the sun the heart of divine love. And in this great alignment flows this love energy into Gaia through all the light workers.
In this synthetic power of the whole of Pisces taking from all the signs, we experience the beauty of consummation. And we experience healing from separation. As the separated parts are drawn together, the illusion of separation is seen through and negated. And the whole that appears now is entirely new. The flowering forth of the good the true and the beautiful is made possible as our highest ideals come to fruition on earth as they are seen in their blueprint above. Through the great agencies of expansion and release, we are made free to experience our higher potentialities. Becoming true servers and therefore saviors of all the kingdoms on earth as the saving force from Pisces flows through us all. In this new moon period, let us hold sustainable development goal number 12, responsible consumption and production to prevail. responsible consumption and production. Let us bring the saving force to flow through this ideal. For the saving of the planet, for the lifting and rising and nurturing of the planet as we each do our part in the one work. So within this energy field, we now work and let us Affirm these thoughts with the sounding of the own. Mm. Alexander and thank you Helena and thanks everyone being in the circle to date with us that we could work together on strengthening the thought forms of the goal 12 and the same as uh, the energy of Pisces is a synthetic energy that brings together all the 12 energies. In a way, the goal 12 is a very synthetic goal because in this goal, 
have focused the key issues related to the idea of restoring sustainable flow of life through our communities, through our nations, and through humanity as a whole, restoring the divine harmonious flow of life in connection with the cycles of Mother Nature. And in a way, our advancement as civilization brought us to the point of um, disconnect from the divine flow and attitudes of consumption became prevailing attitudes in thought forms of our civilization. All our economies are based on the idea, the more we consume, the better econo economically our nations will do. And it became a vicious circle that disconnected us even further from Mother Nature. And the unstoppable consumption of planetary resources on the one hand and un the same unstoppable flow of waste that result from this consumption leads us on like downward spiral And the same as energy of Pisces is the final energy in the zodiac, is the energy of the ending. We seeking today to invoke this energy, invite this energy to help us to end this pattern of vicious circle of consuming and disconnecting us from Mother Nature. This is the energy that could help us, we believe, we choose to believe, through our meditation to enforce, reinforce the thought form of responsible, restoring responsible flow of energy, responsible flow of life, which circulates through our economies. And that's why we work with this goal in this under this energy of Pisces. And if we um, look at the goal itself into the targets, as any other goals, sustainable development goals, it has many uh, very specific measurable targets to achieve. But among all of those, there is a one very um, interesting uh, target that I think directly related to us as a world service and even more as a trained meditators, esoteric meditators. One of the targets says by 2030, ensure that people everywhere have the relevant information and awareness for sustainable development and lifestyle in harmony with nature. I think this is one of the most, in a way, ambitious targets, but probably most achievable uh, in the short uh, frame of this 10 years that left. Because we know that energy follows thought and the behavior changed when beliefs are changed. And if people recognize, could recognize well, the damage that's caused by the current consumption patterns and by our current lifestyle choices that we make every day, that could lead to the changes that, that can create the type of changes that would be unstoppable.
and so therefore um, if we look into the choices that we make every day as trained as a terrorist and knowing that the energy follows thought so the same as in our meditations when we magnify certain ideas through creative meditation the same certain actions that we perform daily can be magnified with creating certain energy patterns and starting to change Sheldon, please, you're welcome to uh, uh, step in any moment. Thank you, Alexander. Um, <clears throat> I would just, as we get deeper into this um, seemingly very material goal here, I'd like to um, remind us once again that <clears throat> of the fact of these meditations taking place during the new moon cycle, wherein the hierarchy itself is focusing on how can it, transmitting to us, convey these energies for just the process that we are engaged in. And in Pisces, it is much easier, I think, for us to, which does, as Alexander was saying, does take from all the signs and brings at least the high possibility of more synthetic kind of thinking, feeling, and realization to begin at least to sense more the work of the hierarchy with us. So we can imagine that there is this group and that they are doing this kind of work, but we have, we have the possibilities during this whole month period, but particularly as we consider this goal to experience a kind of ongoing inspiration which is an aspect of the light of life itself now that can be an idea of course a good one but i would ask us to Be mindful of our experience as we do this work today and all the days throughout this month of the upward, forward moving flow of energies from the spiritual hierarchy and recognize that we work not alone on this earth with other groups, but we also have the a major source of constant inspiration. Of living energies in the spiritual hierarchy and of course the one who stands ever at the center kind of a meditation right okay so speaking more to the actual goal itself um what what we might do is just take a look at some of the words that come when we look at this particular goal written up by the united nations and I um, want to begin with um, just some words about uh, responsible consumption itself, consumption of production. And um, I'm looking at one computer, Pauline is, oh, here we are, yes, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say something that we, we've all read, but just Alexander, I think so eloquently put forth, achieving economic growth and sustainable development requires that from this perspective we reduce our ecological footprint by changing the way we produce and consume goods and resources and as a focus agriculture the biggest user of water worldwide irrigation now coming close to 70 percent of all fresh water human use at the same time looking toward the bottom of this a large share of the world population is still consuming far too little to even meet their basic needs. So as we begin to consider how do we align the flow of 
what's needed. We share those kind of resources. And this particular goal is focused on this. This can help with food security at least and shift us towards a more resource efficient economy. So just a couple of facts. Now I realize this does bring in the concrete mind. So as we read these or think about them, let's keep them in as large a perspective as we can. And these are the current conditions, not the future, which we are trying to create. So at the present time, 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted every year. While at the same time, almost 2 billion people go hungry or undernourished. And I know many of us have read about programs that have begun to relate to trying to um, <clears throat> eliminate waste and, and then move the spread of the flow of particularly of food on a worldwide basis. But this is a very important, important one. And the fact that only 3% of the world's water right now is drinkable. And we're using it faster than nature can replenish it. Other things are of interest here. But when you just think about this, this should generate a positive source of, of concern and energy to figure out how we can change the way we consume water and where the, where the consumption may take place. And we have one or two examples in this in the UN um, writings here that I would like to just cite. And one is um, um, it's called Mission 1.5. Not to get too much into detail here, but this is a mission to from the climate action perspective limit to what degree carbon is released into the atmosphere. And um, this is going to launch, as we read here, in worldwide this month. It's already launched. So we're, uh, we're more, than a, more than a week now into this. And trying to give, give people a direct way to communicate to their governments the changes they want to see. We're going to take a look at this. Alexander alluded to the fact that one of the things that we need is information about what's going on. And most of us here at least in the Western world or a world where there's a lot of education, know some of these things. But this could be this could be made easily more easily available now by what we're about to take a look at. So let's scroll down here just a little bit and um, <clears throat> want to take a look at um, a little, some of the examples of what we're talking about here. Um, so basically, a game has been developed by UNDP with partners, been tested, and now one and a quarter million people have played with this particular game launching. And the goal here is reaching new audiences. We're going to have, um, well, this it uses mobile gaming technology. Now, I will say for somebody like myself, I'm not into gaming, so I understand the words, but maybe others of you will feel this <laughs> more than I do, but it's a great idea. Instead of just a website, the game is delivered through ads, which is really a very key way to spread the message, of course, in some of the most popular video games in the world. And this goes on to remind us that this gaming industry is bigger than the film and music industries combined. And therefore, this mission can reach people who haven't been traditionally involved in climate discussions. And where this leads us, finally, um, is the fact that, that people are going to be able to get the information that is necessary and relay this to their governments so that governments are influenced not just by the current perspective and biases of their, of their leaders, but by the will of the people as we see what's going on. So I thought this was a, a nice one to illustrate. There are some other ones, uh, many of them that are at, at play right now. But this is uh, under, underway right now and should spread fairly rapidly. Okay, I want to do perhaps uh, one more. We're going to go on to um, choosing what to say here. Let's go on to the climate change. Um, let's see. Okay. I, I can. I, I want to just add to what you, Sheldon, uh, just okay. said. In terms of um, communicating the will of people to the governments. Um, yeah. 
I think it's um, it's a definitely uh, very uh, um, it, it's it's a two way street. So one thing is that the government uh, should be uh, should be dictated what to do uh, through the elections. But another thing, no matter how much governments would want to do, if there is no will among people to make those changes, because many of these uh, changes that we're talking about related to uh, establishing a responsible consumption relate to our choices. And at the end of the day, this goal would hit each of us through the uh, economical choices we make. And so in order to make some unpopular decisions, which would be required to implement this goal, because that would have direct uh, consequences for uh, uh, e economies, the government uh, need to be assured that the population will support them through the next election. And so that they're not going to be voted out if they will uh, sign some uh, treaties that will result in uh, reduced economical production. So that's therefore the education of the masses and uh, recogn recognition of the uh, consequences of uh, the choices we make daily uh, related to consumption is uh it's the priority uh for us i think over to you sheldon i think that for many of us um as we, as we see some of the positive examples they may be small but the positive examples that is both encouraging for us to continue but also a sign of, of the mind of humanity beginning to come, come clear and make some of the positive changes that, that we want to see in the world. So I'd just like to give a couple of very brief examples here. There's one from Bhutan, which most of you have heard about from the point of view of changing from their economic measure from gross national product to gross national happiness. And that's been, that's been gee, gosh, almost 15 years now. And many economists have taken a look at this as a way to measure things and therefore count what really counts. This is an example here of, of what they've done in, in Bhutan, where um, I want to point out was uh, how much they've done with reforesting um, their, 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 their country, basically. And uh, what we know is, of course, when, when trees are planted, um, um, carbon dioxide emissions are, are absorbed. And they've already achieved, given this small sort of country, of course, uh, what's called carbon neutrality. Now, this is, I think, put together for big countries to realize this could be done. And they will say, of course, oh, gosh, we've got, we got many more problems than that. But this, this is a sign that this is doable. I want to mention two other things as well. Um, there's one on, you can look and look at this yourself at some point in Chile. But I want to go on to Costa Rica just for a second, because this is a country where, as we say here, it has included the right to a healthy environment for its citizens in its constitution. So this is already built into international law. And Costa Rica, as you probably remember back in the late 80s, um, Oscar Arias winning the Nobel Peace Prize, um, basically disbanded their military. And they are using that money for education and for forestation, reforestation in the country. We could say more about that, but that would be an example. Now, these are small countries and large countries will say, oh, look how easy it is. But the fact it's happening on the planet, what we can do is fan that, that, that sense of <clears throat> both rightness of what's going on and the fact that it's being done, it can be done. And allow that to encourage uh, the larger countries. And if you know about Norway already, but I just wanted to point out Morocco, which was news to me. In the, in the ratings already come out from the United Nations, what, what we read here is, is only one of two countries that this climate action tracker gives the highest, um, you know, 1.5 centigrade Paris Agreement rating. 
and they've got other things to do, but it's a fact that most of theirs has been done now through, through solar power. So we know about these ideas. Wind power. Well, wind, oh, it's wind. It is windy, isn't it? It looks like solar to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. But anyway, it's, it's maybe a bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, well, some of these countries still have coal plants that are, that are active and they, Norway makes money by oil drilling. These goals, as you remember, are designed to be erased by 2050. So putting that kind of pressure to move forward to much more sustainable ways in which to gather energy. Um, um, 2050 is too late, I think. Well, it's too late, it is. So some of these things are gonna be revised. Right now, um, this is what we have to, some of, the, some of the good news that's going on. The fact that the United Nations is, as we read down toward the bottom of the page, this September, the Secretary General um, has invited every head of state to present even more concrete proposals to accelerate decarbonization. Now, this, is a, it's almost, this is a focus on climate change, yes, but, but this is sustainable consumption and development. A wonderful example of this. And we have, so fortunate today, a marvelous uh, Secretary General. We've had a number of them, but uh, um, Gutierrez is uh, said by all who work with him that this is a true leader into the future. And with the emphasis on leaving no one behind. Exactly right. So that's just some thoughts, Alexander. We might want to open it up to other thoughts and comments, do you think, or where should we go from here? Yeah, yeah uh, we uh, definitely invite uh, people in our circle to uh, contribute into this sharing. And the purpose of this um, preliminary sharing leading to our meditation is create the focus on the topic that we I would line on the mental plane, uh, becoming clear what is the, uh, we will be meditating during uh, our creative meditation. So if anyone would like to contribute, please raise your hands and we will unmute you. And you also can uh, use the function of um, questions so you can write your comments. And um, usually takes a couple minutes for the first hands to be raised. I just want to add to that uh, examples of changing uh, patterns uh, of uh, consumption uh, on the national level uh, is India. Those of you who have been to this beautiful country probably noticed throughout the years how huge is the problem of plastic waste being in India for years and the natural cycle of life uh, in traditional communities in India being that uh, whatever waste you have you just throw out outside your house because the climate uh, is such that within a couple months, whatever food waste you have, it will get decomposed. And it's been for millennia. People just lived in this cycle and this problem didn't exist till plastic appeared. Uh, but the behavior continued and so people were still throwing out the garbage out of just outside their house. And within a few years or decades, the amount of plastic that's been thrown into the environment uh, led to almost like national ca catastrophe. And so that was um, my impression when I visited uh, India 10 years ago. And then when last year I went after the, uh, actually 12 years uh, be before that, 12 years later, I was surprised to find that there much less plastic pollution around. They still, uh, a lot of wastelands with the older plastic and but there is no it's not that much into your face so to speak and uh, our friend uh, a local friend told us that actually uh, Indian government uh, adopted very strict rules about plastic use they banned uh, all the plastic bags six years ago and as a result there is no this constantly flying plastic bags everywhere you go you still see the, a lot of plastic waste, but last year they adopted yet another uh, policies that completely bans uh, single-use plastic, uh, and now it's their 
uh, regulations, uh, one of the most strict uh, uh, national regulations in the world. And so uh, they hope that within the few years that would shift this uh, problems to like different level. And so uh, it was very almost joyful to see that that's actually it's possible to on the in the nation of one billion people to make that change. I see we have several hands uh, here, at least one, two hands. So I will unmute Frida. Hello, Hello Frida. Everyone. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Uh, can yes, we can, we can hear you. Yes, Frida. Um, I just wanted to um, enhance what you were saying about um, taking some small actions. Uh, I put in the chat box this wonderful link called The Lazy Person's Guide to Saving the Planet, um, which is simple ideas uh, to implement the sustainable development goals. Um, but I just want to um, build on your idea, which is you don't have to do you know, everything. You don't have to be perfect. Um, but if you take small steps in the direction of sustainable development, um, the simplest little things, um, you know, that can be built on by the rest of society because our consciousness helps to feed the higher consciousness. And so our little steps and the thoughts that go with those little steps uh, can be enhanced many, many times um, through the power of thought. And because we are spiritual people engaged in meditation, I think our thought is more powerful and uh, can be put to positive use by the spiritual hierarchy. So uh, that's my little uh, additional comment to yours. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Frida. Um, Ira, uh, I'll, hello, Ira, you're unmuted. Ira, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I'm Ira uh, Merkel. Um, uh, I, I would like to, to share and maybe ask for advice um, on the project uh, we have been working for the last five years. Um, and uh, it is based on, so, so our intention is to create a multimedia presentation based on a uh, very powerful imagery of a renowned Brazilian photographer, uh, Sebastiago Salgado who uh, actually shows all the suffering of humanity and our uh, global challenges and combined with chamber music to create this powerful media piece. And based on that <clears throat> media pay, uh, piece to create uh, different uh, types of uh, events to engage different groups of people, right? Like uh, colleges and universities, like public libraries, uh, for public communities, uh, conscious business, um, non-profit sector, public sector. And uh, we partnered with um, Unity Earth. Uh, Unity Earth is an organization that uh, produces different types of events, global events and campaigns. And uh, the next campaign will be Caravan of Unity or, or Road to 2020. And uh, this main theme is Unity, One World, Peace, <clears throat> uh, basically goal number 16. And uh, as well, uh, Love to Nature, Honoring the Earth. And, and it's all um, fits uh, this Project Salgado project fits the mission that uh, Caravan of Unity pursues. Also, <clears throat> uh, we have support from United Nations Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, I, I would like to ask who would be uh, at um, uh, Lucy's Trust or the person who can uh, uh, advise us uh, on collaboration ways so we can make it more uh, organized and distribute that media and educate public in a more efficient way using this caravan of unity platform. 
It sounds very interesting project, and thank you very much for doing this. Um, my direct, my immediate response would be, there, there is nobody else but you. So <laughs> if you take the initiative and just bring mm -hmm. it forward, and maybe even using this platform of this webinar, if anyone is interested to join you in any way, so they could mm -hmm. contact. And uh, I think this is a time of many small initiatives. The 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 more uh, diversity of different actions, the better. And in terms of Lucid Trust, you definitely can contact, uh, I think, Steve Nation, because he's a big uh, uh, activist in, uh, in the field of the Sustainable Development Goals. So, uh, Thank you. Alexander, I'd just also add maybe uh, Dominic Dibble, who's a possibility, who's the editor for the World Who Will newsletter. They sponsor the gatherings. So Dominic is kind of a next. Dominic, and uh, what was his last name? Dibble, D I B B L E. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yes, thank indeed. you. Those two are great, great souls. Thank you, Ira. Thank and you. Dasha, I see your hand is raised. You are muted on your end, so please unmute yourself. Thank you, Alexander. And thank you for giving us these positive examples of things that are happening in the world. Because I was alarmed in your introduction where you kept using the word unstoppable. And I don't think anything's unstoppable if we work together to shift the consciousness that's underlying consumption on the planet today. What's so important is realizing that if there is an attitudinal, a thought form shift to there being enough for everyone and enough for nature and coming back into balance and harmony. So there is cause for hope. And thank you for illustrating those examples. That's uh, inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. There definitely things can be changed and behaviors uh, can be and should be changed. And together we can do this. And I invite Tanya. Hey, um, hello, everybody. I have uh, two questions, one for Sheldon and uh, one for Alexander. First, Sheldon, uh, as I was reading and studying the targets, I noticed the Equatorian uh, cocoa farmers that um, developed an uh, innovative program. And uh, <clears throat> this is the first program um, world program using a blockchain shared value chocolate for their cocoa, you know, producers, small producers. And then here in Brazil, in the south of what state I live in, Bahia, uh, one of our students does have a, a cocoa farm. So we started discussing, um, like uh, last month, you know, what kind of small project we would start, we could start there. Uh, to, to, to contribute, you know, to the cause in a, in a small, small scale. And, um, and then, as I went on further into my research, I realized that uh, Brazil has not legalized any blockchain or Bitcoin uh, system yet. So, you know, there's, we could not even uh, use the hints or the incentives of the Equatorian people. But I'd like to write to you a little bit more, show them about um, our Beehive project. So uh, now I go to Alexander. Alexander, thank you so much for your suggestions. And you said that we could address the audience um, to share what we are doing locally. And um, as part of what I just said, 
we decided to investigate the bees because um, we used to have like 150 bees in Brazil and now we have only like 45 different species and they are dying. Why? And then we went to study further. This is because of the use of pesticides and agrotoxics and all the stuff in the farmers that are around, you know. So our friends, uh, who is our student farm, is organic farm and um, they do not use pesticides or agrotoxics when you know any of that. So we decided to um, choose one kind of bee that uh, produces natural honey, you know, and uh, and to see how we could uh, invest in a small scale. And uh, so right now we are looking for partners. You know, they, these uh, bees they they produce a delicious honey, and most people don't know that the um, I, I cannot speak about other countries, but in Brazil, most of the of the honey that is being sold, the bees they they feed on sugar, and not on flowers, natural flowers. They're kept prisoners, and and so they multiply, you know, enormously, and then the the owners sell, you know, new and new beehives, and they make a lot of profit out of this. So what we want to do, we want to invest on the contrary. We want to invest on the bees that are going under extinction. And, um, and and they use in use of flowers of the cocoa plants in the farm, you know, natural flowers to produce uh, the the sugar, and uh, and so we uh, try we're trying to make contact with this mission uh, 1.5, but thank you very much, Alexander. I think uh, yes, we should um, start with small projects, no matter how, because we cannot really rely on government right now. It's just too much bureaucracy. This is my country and other South, South American countries. Thank you. Oh, by the way, this initiative of the Star of Peace project, all right, and. Um, if Rebecca could please uh, write the, the name of my email for the readers to take note and uh, if they want to exchange any ideas or give us any ideas, it'd be very welcome. Thank you, Tanya. You're welcome. Alexander, just a, just a quick comment. I think most of us are aware of this, but just to respond to a piece of what um, oh, we we are part of one of many people who subscribe to this the daily optimist which has been around for now a while and um they uh, uh i came across them in several several different ways but recently through the world business academy and they are now have this newsletter that, that searches the world for this the kind of examples you're talking about tanya and i think that um not only a source to read but i'm going to try to pass what you just said on to them make sure they're, they're they're looking for these kinds of things because these small examples can spread very very quickly and there are many people who who on a on local level start small but will want to have bees as you're saying that that, that work with flowers and not with um the <laughs> how would i say um the part of us has been consumed and thrown away you know what i what i would like to add to that this is helena is that the part that we can do in relationship to the bees is to buy local honey. And local honey uh, producers tend, I would, well, you know, I guess this remains to be tested. We should look into it, but majority are taking honey from local bees and, and it isn't that kind of production. So um, I think that's one small thing that we can do. And it's, it's such an important one because mm -hmm. if, um, if the bee production, if the bees continue to die off as they have been, this is our, our food supply. They are they are pollinators, and um, it's serious stuff. So it, it's all related, you know. It, it's all related to the big money interests once again. Um, you know, fast production, high production. How can we, you know, it's 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 this irresponsible production for consumption. Um, and so one of the answers has been to grow locally, eat locally, and um, by putting our focus in that direction, we begin to <clears throat> undercut the larger producers that create these kinds of, you know, just um, extreme practices um, that are harming the whole. So I love what you're saying, and, and there's a, a huge spiritual component behind this as well, because 
it is said spiritually that um, the bee was brought to Earth from Venus in order to feed the Earth. So there's something extraordinarily symbolic about the bee. Mm to feed humanity. So if we, yeah. if we cut, if we don't, if, we, if the bee dies, um, we're, um, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Alina, we are working on that level as well. You know, we're using our Francis Donald's lectures on the hexagon because um, besides coming from Venus, just like the ants are as well, um, and the bees are a model for organization, you know, and they have, um, scientists have said that they have the most developed way of communication systems. So we're looking mm -hmm. at, we, right now we're just studying the whole thing and it's very exciting. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome, it's beautiful, thank you. There's a, one more hand is raised. Uh, Lucy, please unmute yourself. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we do. Hello. Hello. So just in addition to what was um, mentioned about the way to consume uh, locally and everything, my what what came across my mind is also to the way we consume, do we consume mindfully? Because speaking about honey and a lot of other delicious uh, food that we can have, I happened to be in that situation a few uh, some time ago. Like I realized, I like um, to get a second run when I, I find something tasty and, and I get some pleasure eating. And at some point I got myself wonder like if it was uh, uh, mindful and conscious to always get a second, not always, but quite often because like thinking, oh, that was good. So I will get another another plate or something. And somehow this is also about our own responsibility to um, consume what we need. And quite often, even though we are not into uh, uh, excess and, and uh, some huge quantity or whatsoever, uh, I can see that even myself, even with like very simple food and very simple, um, 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 yes, uh, food, then I can be sometimes caught into this uh, gourmandise uh, stuff that uh, you would get some more. So that was one thought. So, and the other one is about um, the, the presentation itself that was very uh, um, inspiring. And what rem it reminded me also about the fact that the outer world is the consequence of our inner world and about the production. So what is the, um, uh, the thought production that we do have and what is our consumption and everything. So that will be some good meditative uh, food that I will, I will take along to consider as well, because I think it's all about what we send into the, the network with our thoughts and what do we produce is it um, uh, built on fear and on I don't know greed or jealousy or emotional uh, aspects um, can we uh, more and more often uh, bring it to light and to uh, something that would um, spread something uh, uh, more aligned so it can also create a a uh, more aligned future. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Mm -hmm. Another example I can uh, share in, in terms of the uh, choices we, uh, we make is um, we all know, at least in 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 the Western countries, the about the benefits of uh, recycling and separating the garbage. But since a um, few years ago, uh, here in the United States, the the recycling programs have uh, been uh, undermined by the fact that the uh, before all the recycled uh, garbage was shipped to China for further uh, uh, recycling. 
And two years ago, China refused to take uh, that recycled materials anymore. And there is no infrastructure currently in the U.S. that adequately could process all that recycled garbage. And uh, many municipalities uh, had to curb their uh, recycling programs. It's not advertised wi uh, widely, they st uh, at least here in New York City where we live. People still continue recycling, but the city doesn't have capacity to actually process that. And uh, the municipality still keeps those recycling programs because it's difficult to create uh, those programs and educate people about the benefits of that. So people continue recycling it. And uh, every time I throw, like I collect recyclables, I still put my thoughts into that. Even if it's this goes to at this moment to the garbage, this is a pattern that I want to support. This is the choice that I make consciously, and it's every action then becomes as a meditation. I think we are getting close in time um, to our meditation. Uh, mm -hmm. If anyone has any last comments, Sheldon, Helena, anyone in the circle? Um, it's Rebecca here. I was just wondering if I could say something. I um, really love what you're saying, Alexandra, about action as meditation. And I think it brings together a lot of ideas that have um, involved, related to consciousness that have been discussed. Um, and there's the idea of education um, and the importance of um, encouraging everyone to wake up to what we're doing and encouraging ourselves. Um, and then the idea of um, influencing through advertising, which I think is a very different thing to education, where you're really trying to encourage people to think for themselves. Um, but whether those two things can become aligned um, is an interesting thought. Um, and I was very struck also by what you said, Alexandra, about the Indian government making strict rules about single use only um, plastics and um, products because that's the thing you know recycling uses a lot of energy and to reuse is acknowledged as being a much better pathway and I've observed that um, as plastic bags have been banned in our country we're seeing um, drinks that were like the Voss um, water from Norway, which was previously in glass bottles, is now being put into plastic bottles. Um, but there's no reuse program for the for the glass bottles. So it seems like um, the whole thing needs to be an interaction between consciousness um, and education, and that governments can influence in a benevolent way. Um, by making rules for people who are unthinking. But then, as you're saying, we can influence by our thinking the whole thought climate. So I just, I feel like it's it's such an important area to think about how do, how do we generate the change in both the practical ways, but the changes in consciousness and I know that's what we're all talking about, but those I just wanted to pull together those thoughts that were sitting there for me. Thank you for the discussion. It's very rich. Thank you, Rebecca. I think it was a beautiful synthesis of the intention for our meditation. Yeah. Mm. Lena, would you lead us in meditation, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you for all these, these thoughts that are 
<clears throat> an opportunity to be synthesized. Here at Meditation Mount, um, as we're considering the cozy meditation, I um, want to mention that <clears throat> Meditation Mount here is, um, its primary focus now is, we could say as a spiritual lighthouse that emanates six laws and principles that are the foundation for a new world civilization. And the master DK said, live these six laws or, or pathways is another way to, um, there's three pathways that are, or laws that are connected with three principles. And if we would, as a humanity, live them, we would create a new humanity. Uh, um, that's um, for the new world that we want to build in the Aquarian age. And I um, didn't appreciate them enough until I did. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and now they are, um, now it's, it's the goal of living these six universal laws and principles into all our actions. And if we would do that, we would literally the SDG goals, the sustainable development goals, if we coined and matched these together, it's, it's kind of like the, the spiritual blueprint behind um, the manifesting goals for, for building a new world. So the one that I just want to um, emphasize in this closing uh, meditation is the pairing of unanimity and group endeavor. So it's the principle of unanimity and the, the pathway or the law of group endeavor. And this is exactly what we're doing here on these webinars. And there's a beautiful, <clears throat> I'm gonna read you two lines from Discipleship in the New Age, volume two, page 238. And this is the kind of, um, background where these laws and principles can be found around unanimous and simultaneous meditation, which is again, what is being done with this um, 2025 initiative focusing on the new and full moons. Um, so here's a line on unanimity. True unanimity is free decision in response to a presentation of truth, which is as near the achieved reality as possible. Therefore, it is in the enunciation of truth that security for all men lies. And this necessarily <clears throat> involves a deeply spiritual presentation of essential facts. And we could go off on this, these three ideas, <clears throat> this one idea, very, um, powerfully, but so in the enunciation of truth, security for all men lies. And so let us enunciate the truth of unanimity, which is the fact of one humanity, again, pictured as the planet earth. We are one humanity on this earth in a group endeavor to collaborate and bring our energy together purposefully on behalf of the whole. So today, in this new moon, in the year 2020, in the constellation Pisces that synthesizes and brings all things, all energies together from which we create the new world, we are enunciating a truth. And together as a group, let us hold again most powerfully clearly intentionally the idea of responsible sustainable consumption for planet earth
responsible, sustainable consumption and production, production for planet Earth. So let us imagine ourselves once again, standing around the planet in our light bodies or soul bodies. <clears throat> Thinking these thoughts into the feeling body and mental body of humanity. And both are necessary. Let us feel the goodness of consuming responsibly and producing responsibly consciously. Our actions in meditation and as part of the group of world servers through the Ajna Center, we provide the vision for humanity So let us visualize, creatively visualize the billions of consumers on this planet coming forth consuming responsibly with awareness and making a demand on the producers that they come into full alignment with the greater good that they stop harmful practices that they stop greed as the bottom line and replace it with the greater good for the whole So when we think of producers, the manufacturers, the growers, we think this thought powerfully, responsible consumption and production And we think this and feel this firmly and with love. And we act through our part. By being informed, reading labels, in continuing those practices that confirm and affirm conscious living.
And because we are together now, let us together as a group focalize our awareness on the bee populations of the world and the producers of honey and support the bees And let us hold this as a thought now together as we stand round the earth that all bee producers turn to responsible, sustainable production. We draw upon the spiritual hierarchy flowing literally from the energies of Sirius and Venus to our Earth, humanity. And let us simply see happy bees, happy bees all over the planet. Healthy bees. And all that they are connected to, food production, food sharing, nourishment, ending poverty, hunger. So together and as one, friends, let us now sound the great invocation, imagining as we do light and love and spiritual will or power, blessing and stimulating humanity followed by three ohms. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ, the coming one, appear on earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. No.
So be it and help us to do our part. So be it. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Helena. And thanks everyone for being together today in our circle. We invite you to join our continuous work using the creative meditation to strengthen the thought forms behind the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As we go month after month through all the goals, we invite you to join us in the, news, in the next cycle, uh, cycle of from this new moon to the next new moon, focusing on Sustainable Development Goal 5. gender equality so please bring it your focus daily in your meditation to this issue and let's stay together bringing our light of our meditation to goal number five and our uh, new moon webinar in Aries will be the date is not set it yet, but it will be uh, one or two days right following the new moon. And also, please join us for the next um, full moon, the solar, um, Pisces Solar Festival webinar, which will close the annual cycle that follows astrological annual cycles, the last sign of the zodiac Pisces. We will focus on the topic of love, the transformative power of love, fire of love. And our special guest will be David Spangler. And he will share and lead us in this process of expanding our hearts and looking what is the love is. Thank you. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander, and thank you, everyone. Um, and Sheldon and Helena, as we bring this synthesis of Pisces today to a close, realizing that we wish to leave no one behind i'd like to just read a little verse from rudolf steiner that brings some of these ideas together and then um, a moment of silence will close the webinar so rudolf steiner says the healthy social life is found when in the mirror of each human soul, the whole community finds its reflection. And when in the community, the virtue of each one is living.
Thank you, everybody.